In this video, we're going to try and find the turning point of the curve y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 36 plus 10 and determine their natures. So what we're going to do is actually look at what is the idea of turning points. So if we go to this GeoGebra applet and the link to this I will put in the notes of the video on YouTube. If here we have the curve y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 36 plus 10. Right, now if we move the tangent across the curve by moving this slider, okay, if you remember at any particular point P, the gradient of the curve is given by the gradient of the tangent. So here we can see that the gradient is positive, and we get up here, it's still positive, and we get to this particular point here, and we can find that the gradient of the curve is actually equal to zero. We've got a horizontal tangent. So this particular point here where the gradient is equal to zero is called a turning point or stationary point because momentarily the gradient is equal to zero. Then if we carry this along down to here, okay, and again we get to another one here where we have a gradient equal to uh, zero. We can see the gradient here is equal to zero. We've got a horizontal tangent line. So how can we actually algebraic, without having to draw the graph, determine the position of these turning points? A turning with the curve turns direction. Well, what we do is we can differentiate the curve. So we can differentiate this curve using differentiation and put that differential equal to zero. Because remember, when you differentiate a curve, you find the formula for finding the gradient. So what we can do is differentiate that curve, put it equal to zero, and that will, what might give me the two values of x is equal to minus two and x is equal to three. So the first task is to actually locate these two points algebraically. I know we can see it here on the graph, but we need to look at it algebraically. So let's go back to this for a minute. So we've got y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 36 plus 10. So step number one in this process is to find dy by dx, to find the gradient function. And we know that if y is equal to kx to the n, then if we want to differentiate, that's going to be bring down the power in front, n, write down kx, and then reduce the power of x by 1. So we do that to each of these terms one by one. So dy by dx is going to be 3 times 2, 6x squared, 2 times 3, 2 times minus 3, so it's going to give me minus 6x, take 1 from the power, it becomes x. If you differentiate minus 36, you get minus 36, and if you differentiate 10, you get nothing. Right, the next step is to put those uh, dy by dx equal to 0. So we take this uh, algebraic function, the gradient function, and... 6x squared minus 6x minus 36 is equal to 0. Just add in that this is actually called the gradient function. Now, if we now put that equal to 0, and that will give me the position of x, or give me some values of x. Now, there might be one value of x, or two values of x, or even three values of x, where this is equal to 0. So we just, the algebra will tell us. How many, how many positions there? If we've got a quadratic, maybe we can expect two uh, points, which is what, what we're really expecting as we see in the graph. Now, as a common factor of 6, we'll take that out first of all. And we've got 6x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And now we'll factorise x squared minus, 6, uh, minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. So we want sort of minus 1 in the middle, so it's going to give me... So we're going to try 2 and 3, because if we can get 3, take away 2, that's going to be some sort of 1. Now we want this one to be negative, and this one to be positive. So either x plus 2 is equal to 0, so that's going to give that x is equal to minus 2. Or x minus 3 is equal to 0, that gives me x is equal to 3. So we've now found the position of these uh, stationary points. What we've got to do next is to determine the nature, whether it is a maximum or a minimum. Let's, first of all, let's go back to the GeoGebra Appler. 
OK, now, if we take the first one where x is equal to minus 2, OK, if we look at that particular point, the gradient is equal to 0. And if we go just before it, somewhere like there, we can see that the gradient is going to be positive. We've got a positive number. And if we take a value of x just after it, OK, we're going to find that the gradient is actually negative. OK, so if we've gone from positive 0 negative that means we're going to have a maximum point and we normally do this in some sort of table but here's my ta table we've got x minus two point minus two a point just before is minus 2.1 and the point just after is minus 1.9 so what we do if we look at dy by dx and substitute minus 2.1 into it if it is uh, uh, if the value is positive I don't really need to know what the value is if it's positive then this is going to be positive gradient, so we draw a positive line here. If just after, and don't forget just after because we've got negative numbers, is minus 1.9. If we get um, the gradient function to come out to be negative when I put a number just after it, then we've got a negative gradient. And at the particular point, we know the gradient is horizontal, so we go positive, 0, negative so that looks like a maximum point so we would declare that minus 2 is a maximum point we'll look how, how to find that 54 in a minute if we look at the other other value which is just down here at the particular point it is equal to 0 but just before the gradient is negative okay at the point it is 0 but just after it is positive so again, we can draw a, make a similar sort of table. So we take the particular point 3, just before is 2.9, just after is 3.1. And then dy by dx will be uh, negative just before, uh, 0 at the particular point, and positive just after. So if we've gone from negative 0, positive, we have a minimum point. This is how these tables work. How we get the minus 71, I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so step three is to determine the nat their nature. For determine the nature, we look when x is equal to minus 2, but we need to be substituting in to the gradient function, which is this one here. 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. So it's a good idea to write this out alongside the table. We want to take minus 2. A point just before minus 2 is minus 1.9. And the point just after is minus 2.1. If I put minus 1.9 into this, it will come out to be posit um, positive. If I put minus 2 in there, I know it's 0. And if I put minus 2.1 in here and work it out on my calculator, I'm going to get negative. So positive means the slope is like that. Because dy by dx gives me the slope 0, means it's horizontal. And then just after, it is negative. So that means that the point x is minus 2 is a maximum point. And then we repeat it for any other points we have. So we've got x is equal to minus is 3, making a table. We'll put in 3 there. And just before, 3.1. So we've got 2.93, 3.1. We just need to take points close to 3. OK, so if I put 2.9 into that, it will come out to be negative if i put 3.1 into that it will come out to be positive if i put 3 in i know it's zero so that's negative that slopes like that zero slopes like that positive it slopes like that and therefore x is equal to 3 is a minimum point four find the, find the corresponding y coordinates well to do that you have to substitute back into y so you make sure you substitute back into the right thing so we substitute in minus 2 first. And so when x, y is min, uh, when x is minus 2, we're going to get y is equal to 2 times minus 2 cubed, minus 3 times minus 2 squared, minus 36 times minus 2 plus 10. We can do that on our calculator. Make sure, though, we put the what we substituted in, particularly because it's a negative number, into brackets on the calculator. That will give you 54. And therefore, we can say that minus 2, 54 is a maximum point. Repeat for when x is equal to 3. So we get y is equal to 2 times 3 cubed, 
minus 3 times 3 squared minus 36 times 3 plus 10. So it's going to give you minus 71 again. You just do that in your calculator, substituting very carefully. Good idea to put what you substitute in into brackets. Therefore, we can conclude that 3 minus 71 is a minimum point. So this is how, how you do it algebraically. Of course, th this will be backed up by whatever you do with any uh, graphing software. So you can see here, maximum point at minus two, minimum point at uh, three. Okay, so that GeoGebra app I'll put in the notes of the video. This has been a video to find, show you how to find turning points on a curve and to determine their nature or classify their nature. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching. I do apologize for this video being very long. Thank you very much.